March 2010. After almost 200 years of non-activity in the south of Iceland, Eyjafjallajökull erupts. An eruption that paralyzed Europe's air traffic for days with its eight kilometer high ash cloud. The Westman Islands off the coast of Iceland are drowning in ashfall at times. Heimei, the largest and only inhabited of these islands, gets a reminder of times past. Eyjafjallajökull is a sleeping giant once more. Iceland experiences volcanic eruptions every five years on average. Eldfell and Helgafell almost destroyed Heimei 40 years ago. Fortunately, a storm the day before had confined the whole fishing fleet to the harbor, making it possible to evacuate the entire population in time. A third of all homes were flattened by the lava stream or burnt. There was also the danger that the lava would close off the harbor. For weeks, they hosed it down with cold water and eventually managed to prevent it. The entrance to the harbor is smaller now, but the harbor itself is even better sheltered than before. Iceland and the Westman Islands are located on the Mid-Atlantic Fold, where the Eurasian and North American plates are drifting apart. A seam in the Earth's crust that keeps opening up, causing frequent volcanic eruptions. Iceland is one of the Earth's most active volcanic areas. All islands here were created by volcanic eruptions about 5,000 years ago, forming a chain from north to south. Only Sertse, the most southern island, is younger. We at Newton had planned to get to Sertse by boat today, but it was too stormy. Sertse is named after the northern god of fire, Sertsur, who created an inferno here 50 years ago. At a depth of about 130 meters, a 400 meter long fissure opened. After only one day, the island started to appear at the water's surface, producing a 10 meter high column of steam. During the following months, four islands altogether grew out of the ocean. Only Sertse is high enough to have no water filling the craters anymore. While the other islands were washed away again by the ocean within a few months, lava started to flow on Sertse. The cooled down lava is hard enough to shelter the island from erosion. At the Icelandic Institute for Natural History, scientists research the volcanic past and present of the country. Sertse was already protected as a natural conservation area during its formation and has become one of their most important research projects. Very few researchers were allowed to actually set foot on Circe. One of them is geologist Lufisa Osbjørndottir. When Circe erupted in 1963, around 70 percent of the volcanic material was tephra, like this one. The tephra is very loose and it easily eroded away. This is an aerial photo of Surtse when the eruption had ended in 1967. And there you can see the, the two cones and they are mainly made of tephra. And then the flava began to flow and, and this is the older one and, and this is the younger one. And they protected the tephra in there. However, the lava layer doesn't keep the surface from eroding forever. So what made Sertse last? When you have a geothermal in the island, we, the, the tephra begins to alterate and we have this consolidated palagonite tuff. And this palagonite is very hard and resistant for the sea waves. Uh, Dr. Sveit Jakobsson, geologist 
at the Institution of Natural History has been studying the alteration between the tephra and the palagoni tuff. And it was a surprise to him that it only take two years for the palagoni to, to form in, in Surtsey because scientists thought it would take a l lot of longer time, a much longer time than it did. Since the weather, or at least the high waves, did not cooperate today, we want at least to have a look from the air. other Westman Islands, one could not reach by boat at all because they are just cliffs sticking out of the sea. The only place where a boat can land on Circe is called the North Spit. Besides that, there are only steep cliffs on Circe. Svein Jakobsen discovered that palgonite forms at a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius. Only underneath the crater and the lava domes could these conditions be found for a longer time. Therefore, those will be the only parts of the island able to survive. The coast at the spit is completely covered with lava rock. This makes it difficult for a boat to land. But there, a tiny bit of sand. We have to make sure we will find this again when we come by boat. Deep erosion fissures. The palgonite areas are so compact, no rainwater can seep in. The rain creates waterfalls around the island, eroding the edges. The next morning, disappointment. The weather is not cooperating again. This could be a real problem soon. Only about 100 people have been allowed to set foot on Circe so far, scientists and reporters. One needs a permit from the government, which is hard to get and has a time limit. When the next stretch of reasonably good weather comes, another group might already have booked it. That would be the end of our trip. In July 2008, UNESCO declared Circe a World Heritage Site. What makes this island so outstanding to deserve this prestigious award? The researchers at the Institute for Natural History discover Circe's uniqueness day by day. Not only geologists, but also biologists like Borgtorn Magnussen think it is right that Circe got world heritage status. On Circe, there was an opportunity to study how, how plants and animals would colonize the island and how the ecosystem would develop. And we have been able to do this. So, uh, Surtsey has been visited every single year from its formation. And we now have a 50-year uh, record from the island, and which is uh, quite unique. I, I don't think you have such a complete record from all, any other island in the world. Scientists found over 70 species of plants, but less than 60 were able to establish themselves for a longer term. It looks as if Circe has exceeded its biodiversity already. During the last, last few years, the, the number of species on Circe, plant species, has been declining somewhat. So we believe that perhaps we have reached the peak there, that, and the e ecosystem will 
become similar to what we found on the neighboring islands. So you can already see these changes taking place. Finally, the weather is great and it will be only us visiting Surtsey today. We get the go-ahead from the government, as well as Captain Hilmar. Our official guide is Tordas Bregadotir. She makes sure we do not take anything from the island or leave anything behind. Our shoes are especially well cleaned for the trip. No seed can be stuck on our shoes. If it were to germinate, it would throw out all the data biologists collect. The birds are allowed, we are not. In spite of the sunshine and blue sky, there is strong wind in the forecast for the afternoon. This could mean we are not able to get back by boat. Therefore, Hilmar speeds up a bit, so we have at least two to three hours to look around the island. After about half an hour, we are almost there. This is a first for Tortoise. Up to now, she always came by helicopter. Now we have to find the little patch of sand we saw from the airplane. It doesn't look very inviting. Maybe there is a better spot. But after a few meters, there is already the cliff again. Hilmar doesn't look too happy, but eventually he decides on a little sand patch as a good spot to land. There is no mooring place for the big boat. We have to be taken to shore in a small boat. This means don't hesitate, just jump. It all looks quite easy, but being in the little boat, we realize that the waves are much higher than we expected. While we get our gear together to finally get onto the island, the surf becomes a lot stronger. And behind us, we can hear a wave. The dip of Surtse is changing all the time. It's never the same. For 20, 30 years ago, we had this lovely sandy beach, but now it's very rocky and with big boulders of lava that has been breaking down on the south coast and transported along the west coast and to this dip where it is settled down. That also protects the islands from people going offshore. After a bit of a rough landing, Surtse greets us with a breathtaking view to the Westman Islands and Ayafetlayukos. It is more than 80 kilometers away, but looks amazingly close. 
fascinating that plants and animals reach Circe over that distance. Already in 1965, the first plant was found, a sea rocket that flourished over the years amazingly well. It is a plant of this region, which could not be said for some of the other species. In the early years, one summer, uh, one of the students found quite a familiar plant growing out on the lava. And when he looked closer, then he saw that someone had eaten a tomato and uh, it didn't follow the sanitary rules and went about his doing his things out on the lava and the tomato started growing a few weeks later. The tomato plant was ripped out, but many other plants arrived on Circe in a very similar way via birds, over very long distances. In the stomach of a bird, researchers found little pebbles and seeds from the Scottish Highlands. With the wind, floating in the sea and even through fish, seeds, insects and microorganisms made their way here. A bird, maybe on its way to feed its young, dropped an earthworm. Not long after, earthworms established themselves on Circe. Not many plant species can survive in the long run so close to the Arctic Circle, and the stronger ones crowd out the weaker ones. The only structure is a type of lighthouse that was never used because of the often very low clouds. It has become a shelter for a very basic overnight stay. One person who has used this shelter numerous times is one of the veteran researchers of Circe, Sterla Fredriksson, biologist and geneticist, a man of the first hour. Since Circe started forming, he has come every year. He takes his inspiration from the grandfather of Charles Darwin. I read the story by um, Erasmus Darwin, and in his poem, he describes that a life had been formed during a, an eruption in ocean. An idea that fascinated Fredriksson. He created a miniature ocean by mixing distilled water with the exact salts found in the North Atlantic and put glowing lava into the container. I had uh, this uh, water analyzed and um, there, there were two amino acids found in the container, glycine, glycine and alanine. Amino acids are part of DNA. No one knows what kind of life Circe will still produce, even without seeds. The island is still very young. The English people, they say about old people, oh, he's as old as the hills. But I could say, when I walked on Circe, I am twice as old as the hills. The hills on Surte that were only 40 years old, and I was 80 years old at that time. Not only Sterla Fredriksson, but every scientist is well aware of the fact how young this island is. We must realize that we have only had 50 years on Surte, so we, are, we have just been reading the first chapter of the story. If you stay on Surtsey and look at the older islands, then you see what will become of Surtsey in hundreds or thousands of years. Hopefully, uh, studies will continue on Surtsey and, and uh, there will be more exciting chapters uh, coming from the island in the future. We're learning much more about the island. It's only, we're only just beginning.